In this country, we're joined by Douglas Murray of the Centre for Social Cohesion, from Rotterdam by Professor Tariq Ramadan of Oxford University, and the Bishop of Hume is still with us uh, from Manchester. Um, Professor Ramadan, is there any head of steam in the Muslim community here, serious head of steam for the introduction of Sharia law? Look, no, I, I don't think that you will find, you know, Muslim organizations and Muslim leaders asking for uh, something which has to do with Sharia law. But what we have to do first is really to define what we are talking about. I really think, having, you know, followed the whole discussion around the Archbishop of Canterbury, that what we are saying now, what he said, is unfair. He was not at all, and you know, he knows exactly yeah, okay, what he is speaking yeah, about okay. when he is referring to to, to Sharia, Sharia law. He's not talking about, you know, uh, cutting heads and this is not what he's talking about. He was talking mainly about family laws within the British system. Yes, and I think that now we are just uh, saying things about him which are not fair. So I want to start with this because knowing his discourse, I really think that all this controversy is not at all in tune with his spirit and the way he's looking at things. Okay, fair now, enough. We'll, come to, the the, we'll come to the interpretation in a second or two, if, if we may. Let's no, no, but I think it's really important. It, yeah, okay, hang on, let me just bring in Douglas really Murray here. For us, let's, let's let, another me, let me just answer no, no, your just, question. I'm sorry, I'm going to bring Douglas Murray here because there's another important qualification which he accepted in his lecture, which was that the, the jurisdiction of these courts, in whatever form they existed, would clearly only apply to people who accepted the authority of the court, who were believers in other words. Well, let's take it like this. Uh, thanks to the Archbishop's comments. Um, if, if, he, if he saw what he wants to see, a Muslim girl born in this country would, because she was born to a Muslim family, be treated in her courts, in Sharia courts in this country, as being worth half the worth of testifying of her non-Muslim neighbor. That is what would happen. We would be no, ghettoizing people into this implying that if you're born a Muslim, you will be run by Muslim law. If you're born a non-Muslim, you'll be run in the normal way that everyone else in the country is. The Archbishop, who is, it's extraordinary we've got to this stage, but the Archbishop in promoting Sharia law, apart from the fact he should resign, has made life incredibly difficult for progressive Muslims in this country who want to object to Sharia, and he's made it vastly easier for the extremists to see there's something they can get if they hold on long enough. At the very least, Bishop, what he's done is to enable Muslims in this country to say, look, we don't accept your legal system. There are better systems. There's the word of God as revealed in Sharia law, and the Archbishop of Canterbury tells us so. Well, that's exactly what he didn't say in the lecture, and those of us who have read it, and I think you've read it, Jeremy, from the sound of things, actually would acknowledge that um, he identified very clearly the issues of injustice that were in certain aspects of Sharia law, which this country would want nothing to do with, and that our legal system would have to make quite clear that there were values within our legal system what? which would mean that certain aspects of for example the treatment of women had to be dealt no. with properly by this is by not the no, this is not to do with the 95 percent of Sharia which its apologists say is that is is not to do with hand chopping the, 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 the issue of Sharia which I don't know if you're familiar with this but if you're dealing with Sharia in this case it is dictated in the Quran in the second book of the Quran that women are worth half that of men now if you want to have a parallel legal system in yes. this country Did which, you actually throws out, which throws out the, the uh, rights accomplishments of this country runs roughshod over them and decides that women are worth half of you, then I resent the fact that you're trying to speak for anyone, but let alone I, Christians. Have you, have you actually read the lecture and did I, you see in the lecture? Absolutely, I read the lecture and I found and out what I could from it and I listened to the interview he gave, in which might I add, in his interview, he said that it was wrong that everyone should be treated under the same rule of law in this country. He said that there were problems from that. I don't think there are problems from that. I think that's one of the best accomplishments we've got, that everyone is equal before the law. And the head of your church is saying that it should be different? No, what he, the head of the church is saying that there are certain aspects of the different cultural tra religious traditions of our society which should be respected, if at all possible, within our legal system. For example, is it not right that, w uh, that men and women can be married in the mosques as they are in uh, synagogues, as they are in churches and chapels? Is it not right, for example, and our society is already adapted to this, that aspects of um, the Muslim approach towards money and finance should be accommodated with in our system, and we've actually adopted our financial laws in order exactly. to Exactly, it's happen. already been accommodated. Yes, but that's one yeah. aspect, yeah, and we've done right. it, so okay. we've already taken aspects okay. of Sharia law into this Second country. Second, uh, Tariq Ramadan, can you um, just tell us, what effect has this controversy, or what effect is it beginning to have in the Muslim community? 
Uh, look, first the Muslims and the Muslim organizations are not asking for a parallel system. They are law-abiding and they, uh, they, there is room for us to remain Muslims and fully Muslims within the legal British system and there is no problem. Within this the, system, can I, can I just ask you, on a question of, can I ask you on a question of fact? Apostasy, denying the faith, is punishable by death under Sharia law, isn't it? No, no. Look, every look, once again, you are the, exactly you are you are. Exactly. Is that true or not? Is it true or not? Of, can can I can I can I answer? Because you are asking question, and when Murray is talking, you let him talk, and, and when I am talking, you don't let well, me. Well, then I suggest finish, you answer like, the question, sentence. please. Uh, I am I'm answering the question, telling you that you are following in the footsteps of Mr. Murray, coming with a perception of Sharia that it's monolithic and there is no room for interpretations. Your understanding of apostasy is not the only Islamic answer. And I and others, the Mufti of Egypt recently said, you know, that you can change your religion and you are not going to be killed. So don't come with something which is a simplistic definition of Sharia and do what Murray is doing, which is using this controversy to nurture an Islamophobic oh, uh, oh, discourse. Right. The people around us, this is exactly what you are doing, Mr. You Murray. think it's Islamophobic to point out that we think that women British, should be treated equally me, to men? Let me finish. Let me finish. The, the people should understand and our fellow citizens should understand that the Muslims are not asking for a parallel system and there are many interpretations relating to Sharia and it's much more open exactly. than that and don't come well, with something which is a superficial discourse. Okay. I'm sorry well, to Sueb Hassan was on the television last week, last Sunday night. Which is not acceptable. Last Sunday night, Sueb Hassan from the Islamic Sharia Courts of Britain was on the televisions across this country on Channel 4 saying that but he, would like, he would like, he would like, the great majority of the Muslims are not following hands that. Chopped off, I'm all sorry that stuff. to tell you, Mr. That's Murray. Where it is, Mr. Ramadan, we know Mr. where that's Murray, where it you leads. are just using. You are using the controversy to spread fears in the British society. There is a the good reason to be fearful of, of Sharia, Mr. Ladies. Ramadan. C you, can I, can, you, yeah, can, let's just no, take this back. Let's, let's go, let's, before this. we argue about interpretations of Sharia, and this is one of the many problems, as even you acknowledge, Mr. Ramadan, there are so many interpretations. The key to this is, is a belief, somehow, that hundreds of years of removing religion from the legal process of this country should somehow be reversed. And that's a thing that's very hard nobody for a lot of people to take. Nobody is asking this. No, nobody is asking this. I'm, uh, you know, the great majority of the Muslims are saying something else. When, for example, in the British law, there is justice for everything, uh, for everyone, equality before law. This is our Sharia. We don't have a problem with this. When you are telling me, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm respecting the British law because within the British law there is equality before law. This is our Sharia. So don't come with a, a nurture this perception that we are. We have a, a, a closed system which is against the British system. Absolutely. This is simply not true it's in for the, the great majority of the Muslims living in Britain and in Europe. This is not true. It's this also is what people like Murray are using to okay. build uh, to build right, the Mr. walls Murray. between is the it, people and nurturing fine, a rejection okay. of Muslims. It is the case, is it not, that there are all sorts of exemptions that people are entitled to on the profession of religious belief. For example, um, doctors being required to perform abortions object on religious grounds. There are all sorts of religious institutions, quasi-religious courts in this country. The Jews have them, for example. Why shouldn't the Muslims? We should clear up this for a start, which the Archbishop of Canterbury has also got wrong, which is that Jewish courts in this country are, first of all, informal, and secondly, voluntary. They do not have any rights that supersede or stand equal to British law. The Sharia notion is that it stands not only equal, but superior to British law. The Jews have just been thrown out no, of the Archbishop no, of Canterbury. No, 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 as something as you are, you are, you are a, a sacrifice to the rest of it. This is a totally different thing. This, if you want to throw Islamophobia around for Mr. Ramadan, let's talk about the anti-Semitism of the notion that you, you say, you are, oh, you well, are we will give the Sharia to you now, guys. Just, just, have, have just, just, uh, just both of you, hold on a second or two. Bishop, you can have the last word. I'm just appalled about how the whole debate has been now cari uh, caricatured, really, uh, of what it was actually about in the first place. The Archbishop of Canterbury, as the religious leader of this country, actually brought an issue to a, an, a, an intellectual discussion about the whole issue of the way in which one community and its culture was being treated and there were issues within that culture which needed addressing uh, in relation to equality uh, compared with other religious organizations okay. like the church okay. and so on. All right, and, and, and now it's all run right. away. Thank this, you. This, Thank this you. Are words Thank